A lovely welcome to all wherever you are watching me from or wherever you are getting this message from. My name is Brother Michael Cheta. Today I just want to share the message which is going to be taken from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. That's where our message is going to, uh, to come from. But before we do anything, let's humble ourselves and uh, pray. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done in our life and what you always do in our life. We thank you for the salvation you have given us through the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the Calvary because of our sin. Father, we ask for forgiveness because we know we wrong you unknowingly and knowingly, but we are asking for your forgiveness to forgive us. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash our sins. Let the blood of Jesus Christ change our characters and our mindset. Dear God, we thank you for whatever you do in our life. We ask for your protection as we are starting this program. We ask for your protection, dear God, that start with us, walk with us, and hand with us. Give us wisdom to understand your word. Give us wisdom to understand and follow your instructions. Give us wisdom and knowledge to understand the nature of this earth. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's continue our business. Just like I said earlier on that the message is going to be taken from 2, Chron 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. That's where the message is going to be taken from. And the theme is if my people. That is the theme for today. If my people. That is the theme for today. But before I read this context, allow me to just shed more light about the pretext of this 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. The pretext of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, it's a story about uh, Solomon. After Solomon built the temple, he dedicated the temple to God. And we know that this temple, the plan started with his father David. And for some, some issues, David was stopped by God to build the temple. So the Lord said, Solomon will build my temple. Now, here Solomon has finished building this temple and he offered the, um, and he offered the prayer. He dedicated the temple to the Lord. And after dedicating this temple, now the, uh, the Lord responded that the response is in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. And the response was, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. This is the message that came from the Lord, the response that came from the Lord after Solomon prayed to God and dedicated the temple. Solomon built the beautiful temple and this temple had a lot of things that we can take time to explain. It had a, it had a lot of materials, expensive materials, meaning people dedicated their life to build this temple of the Lord. Now, surprisingly, after Solomon prayed, now the response from the Lord wasn't like congratulating Solomon to say, you have built a beautiful temple, you are my king, you are my son, I'm very pleased to what you have done. No, but the Lord said, if my people, meaning the Lord was not interested in the temple, the Lord was interested in people's life who will be in that temple. So, the first lesson for today, we are learning that, or the concept that we can understand from here is that the Lord is not interested in these temples or buildings to say we have a big church, meaning we have the presence of God if we build a big church. God is more interested in our lives, those people who get into the temple, those people who get into the building of a church, those are the one God who, or those are the one God are interested in in. So, building a church, it's not a sin. Yes, of course, we can build, build buildings to say these are the temples of the Lord, but we should remind that the Lord 
count us human beings as real temples. No wonder the Lord said, if my people, meaning he was more interested in people's life. Now, what was his interest? Let's uh, zoom here. Let's shed more right here. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, the first point is humble themselves. No one can worship God without humble himself. No one can serve God without humble himself. Let me remind you, the opposite of the opposite of humble is pride. In our local language, we said ichirumba. Opposite yakufuka. In our local language, we said kukwate chirumba. Pride. That is the opposite of humble. So any person who is not humble cannot save the Lord. And that was the first request the Lord told Solomon: If my people who are called by my name humble, that is the first uh, point we have. Uh, taken from this uh, text. Humble. So uh, whatever we are doing, whatever spiritual work we are working for God, we should humble ourselves before God. And then uh, the Lord continues, humble themselves and pray. The word here that we are going to underline is the word prayer. I know a lot of us We have different definitions of prayers, but I just want you to know that there is also another definition of prayers. What is a prayer? A prayer is talking to God or communicating to God. Now, communication doesn't only uh, involve one person talking. It's like a dual system. When one person talks, the other one responds. So in prayer, we are saying that we talk to God, listen to God, and follow the instructions of the Lord. Because there is no way we can say we are praying, then we say we are talking to God, and then when God says we should do this, we are not doing that, we say it's a full, complete, or effective prayer. No. That's where the barrier of communication in terms of prayer to God comes in. Some of us, we make mistakes. We are good in speaking to God, but we are not good to listen to what God wants us to do. And we are not even fit uh, to do what the Lord wants us to do because we are just good or we are too talkative. We don't listen to God's instructions. So, prayer is very important in people's life. The Lord said, if my people humble themselves, second, pray, meaning it is, uh, it is like a prayer, it's a daily oxygen of someone who is a believer. There is no way you can be in a relationship with your father and you are not have that tendency and propensity to talk to your father. So prayer helps us to to talk to our God. It is a privilege God has given us to talk to him. Prayer, it is the only way a sinner can meet God and speak to God. And that is a prayer of repentance. A sinner cannot talk to God about any business apart from first repenting and then engage other things you want to request from the Lord. So, we should have a lifestyle of prayers as Christians. Those who are called Christians, if you are a Christian and you don't have that tendency to talk to your father who is our father, then you are a wrong child of God. Another thing that followed, the third thing, humble and themselves and pray and seek my face. So, we are going to underline the word seek my face. A Christian, a true child of God, should have that uh, that uh, energy to look for God. Should have that zeal to look for the face of God. How do we look the face of God? We look the face of God by studying the Word of God. We look the face of God in prayers. We look uh, uh, the face of God, or we set the face of God through prayers and also studying the Word of God and listening and learning the Word of God. But some of us, we are too good to look for pornographical materials. We are too good to gossip about other people's lives. But we are failing to look uh, and seek the face of God. But we have energy to look for food. We have energy to look for, uh, for the jobs, to seek jobs. But we are forgetting to seek the face of the one who, who made it possible for us to be alive today. 
So my brother and my sister, you should have the tendency to seek the face of God in any situation. Fiwame Fibipe, you should have that tendency. And another thing the Lord added on was, if my people who are called by my name humbles themselves, pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. So we are going to underline the word Turn from their wicked ways. My brothers and sisters, we have committed a lot of things. We have, we have done a lot of abomination things in our lives. We have sinned against God. We have done something which, which we can't even explain. If you just keep quiet and think of those bad things that you have co committed against the law of God, your heart will be your witness to say, yes, you are truly a sinner. And some people, they have continued in those ways. They have continued in worshiping the devil through doing bad things or through sponsoring sins. This is the right time to turn away from the wickedness. The Lord told the Israelites to say that if they turn away from their wicked ways, the Lord even right now, he wants us to turn away from the wicked things we do. Wicked things we do such as watching pornographic materials. Apart from watching pornographic materials, adultery, fornication, gossiping, and hatred in our life, we should turn away from those wicked things. Remember, we are the true temple of the Lord. The Lord cannot uh, be present in a building alone, which was just made by the hands of human beings, us. But the Lord wants to be in his temple, which he created, meaning you and me. We are the true temples of God. Then the Lord added on, Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now, these are some of the blessings that comes when you obey, seek, and pray. When you seek the face of God, there are some blessings that comes in along the way. These blessings are God will hear from heaven. He will hear your cry. He will hear your troubles, and he will forgive your sins. And he will heal your land, meaning he will bless you in abundantly. This is the message that we heard, at you, and it was taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Uh, we shall meet again, same place, and the uh, same platform, which is social media. I thank you. May the Lord uh, bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.